This is the fourth in a series of lectures on algebra for students in MS 2014 and MS 3014 at University College Cork. In this lecture, we'll look at the Chinese remainder theorem. So the, the problem of the Chinese remainder theorem is the following question. Uh, we know um, uh, that we, uh, that some integer has given remainders, given remainders mod some given integers, and we have to find it. So unknown, some unknown integer. So a simple example would be something like um, an unknown integer x, or um, integer x has remainder 1 mod 3 it has remainder 2 mod 4 and it has remainder 1 mod 7 so the question is how do we find x how do we find such an integer it's convenient to say that two integers that two integers are are co-prime two integers are co-prime if their gcd is 1 and then a, a collection of integers. Say if we have a whole bunch of integers, we say that they're co-prime if uh, any two are co-prime. Okay, so that's a, the term co-prime, which we'll use a lot. So in other words, co-prime here, meaning if you have two integers, we want to make sure that, that they don't have any common factor. Um, and then if we have many integers, we want to make sure that no two have any common factor. Um, so that's how we use the word co-prime. Now, what we want to do is come up with a recipe that will enable us to, uh, to, to find the, the solution to this problem here. Um, so what we want to do is to look at um, uh, making a recipe for um, solving questions like this. x is r1 modulo m1 one remainder modulo one number and another remainder modulo another number and so on and so forth all the way down to being some remainder. So we only have finitely many of these Rn modulo Mn. And uh, we're going to have to assume that all these m's are co-prime. Uh, these numbers here will have to be, all of them have to be co-prime. Otherwise, our technique won't work. Um, so what's the technique? Uh, we're going to let uh, m be, the, again, colon equals means is defined to be the product, m1, m2, dot, 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 mn. Multiply all the numbers, all these numbers together that we're working modulo. And then we'll let uh, u1 uh, be uh, the same thing, m1, m2, dot, 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 mn. But cross out the m1. u2 is m1, m2, dot, 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 mn. But cross out the m2, and so on and so forth, all the way to un, which is m1, m2, dot, 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 but cross out the last, the mn. Okay, so those are our u's. This is our, uh, our m. And then what we're going to do is we're going to suppose um, that we find some uh, some vi integers, these are the u's, we have to find some vi's so that um, uh, so that um, vi, each vi is ui inverse modulo mi um, so that this holds um, so find vi's so that that holds and then our recipe is that we can find a solution x to this problem which is going to be that x is just defined, sorry, just defined to be, is defined to be, um, uh, x is defined to be remainder 1, u1, v1, plus dot, 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 plus last remainder times last product of u's, v's. So we have to somehow find reciprocals. So we, we compute out this product, we compute out these various products with terms cancelled in them, then we find reciprocals for these numbers, and then we can explicitly write out the answer. Let's prove that this technique works first. Um, so why does it work? Um, 
so what we want to do is simply to uh, to note that we've uh, if we look at um, u i as a factor uh, of everything m j uh, if j is not i okay but no factor of m i because the m i's and j's are all um, co prime there's no way could, there could be any m i sitting in any of the m j's and this guy's a product of all those m j's that aren't m i so it's got factors of all the m j's but no factor of m i and um, so mod uh, m i we get that u i v i is one we by by definition we made the v i's reciprocal to the m i to the to the u i's that was the definition mod m i but um, uh, mod m j for j not equal to i u i has a factor of m j in it u i's factor of m j and so u i v i has a factor of m j and so this is zero and so uh, mod m i you get one but mod m j for j not i you get zero and so um, that means when we now apply that reasoning to our x x is r one u one v one plus dot 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 plus R n u n v n, and so mod uh, m i. Um, well, x is um, well. It's it's going to have um, if i is not equal to one, this u one v one dies, and so on and so forth. So you only get so you kill off everything in here except you kill you get one factor, which is where you have r i u i v i. So mod m i, all the other ones disappear because u1, if oh, i is not 1, u1 has a factor of m1 in it and so on. So there's a factor of mi in every term except the i term. And that's just this guy. But this was 1, and so you just get ri. So it satisfies mod mi xi is x is ri. And that's what we did to satisfy. Okay, so that's the proof that it works. And uh, how many solutions are there if x and y are both solutions? Um, solutions then uh, what can we say about how, how close do they, can they get to each other or how many different solutions are there? Um, then we can say that x uh, is equal to y modulo mi for all i. And um, so in other words, a diff the x minus y is divisible by mi for all i. But those are co-prime numbers. And so it's divisible by all these different co-prime integers. And so it must be divisible by their product. And so x minus y is divisible by the product m. And so, um, so what we can say, therefore, is that x uh, solution is unique uh, uh, up to m, sort of mod m. So we get a solution, and we get that it's unique up to m's. So let's work out an example of seeing how to do this in practice, because you'll need to know how to actually carry out these kind of computations. Um, so uh, we start with um, this is our example. Um, we'll start, try x is 1 mod 3, x is 2 mod 4, and x is 1 mod 7. OK, so these are our m's. These are 3, 4, and 7. So this is supposed to be uh, equals. So this is ri, mod, oh, sorry, r1 mod m1 r2 mod m2, and this is r3 mod m3. So these are our r's. These are our m's. And so we let m be the product, 3 times 4 times 7, the product of all the m, the m1, m2, m3. The product is called little m, um, uh, which is uh, uh, so uh, 3 uh, um, times 4 is 12, and times 7 is, um, is, um, is 84. Um, so then we have to work out what are the various u's. So um, u1, u2, u3 are 3, 4, 7, 3, 4, 7, 3, 4, 7. Cross out the 3, cross out the 4, cross out the 7. And so we get 28. These are integers, by the way. These aren't remainders. Um, 21 and 12. OK, so those are the actual integer values for the u's. Now we have to um, 
work out what are the remainders modulo the various m's and so u1 is um, 28 which is um, uh, so I want to work out the remainders mod 3's and so um, so 28 is uh, 9 3's plus 1 so it's 1 mod 3 u2 is 21 we're working mod 4's so that's 5 4's plus 1 so that's 1 mod 4. And then u3 is 12, which is, um, uh, so which is um, uh, 7 plus 5. So it's, um, I'm going to be crossing out 7, so we can mod 7. And so, um, so mod 7, so that's 5. So now we compute out the reciprocals of these mo in this modular arithmetic setting. So those were integers, but these are actually uh, re um, remainders. These are only their remainders. And we work out the reciprocals of those remainders. So v1, v2, v3 are supposed to be the reciprocals of 1, 1, and 5, modulo 3, 4, 7, mod 4, mod 7. And reciprocals, I'll ha I won't do the calculations. We've learned how to do them using bazooka coefficients. I'll let you work out the answers uh, for these reciprocals that you get 1, 1, and 3. It's now convenient to just work out the products in integers, not in remainders. u1, v1, u2, v2, u3, v3. Uh, so we can let v, the v's be these as integers as well. Here they are as remainders, but we could allow them to be any remainders with this property. So we don't be integers, integers of these remainders. So we'll just take those, and we've got u1 is 28, u2 is 21, u3 is 12 times times times. The v's are 1, 1, and 3. So we get 28, 21, and 36. So finally, our recipe has it that um, our number x is supposed to be r1 times the product of the u's, uh, u times v, r2, product of the corresponding uv, and r3, sorry, plus r3, product of u3, v3. We've done the u's and times v's here. The remainders were uh, 1, 2, and 1 times, 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 and then these guys, 28, 21, and 36. If you put all that together, you're going to get um, 106. So that's an answer, x. But remember that we're working up to uh, m's. m was, in our case, 84. Um, so this isn't the smallest answer. It's not the best answer. And that's very typical of this method. It doesn't always pop out the best choice of answer. It gives us 106. But uh, 106 is supposed to be the answer up to 84s. And so we could find a better answer by killing, killing off an 84 and getting 22. So in fact, the, the best answer, in some sense, is the this answer we get by taking the method uh, we've used here, the Chinese major theorem method, calculates out an answer. Then we should take its remainder, mod m, to be able to find the smallest answer. So if the method is worth learning how to do, um, you'll need to know how to calculate that. It's a useful trick. but um, we want to also think about it in a more conceptual way that's a bit more of a bird's eye view of the of the theorem. Um, which makes it somehow easier to remember how it all works. Um, so imagine we're given these m1, m2, and so on up to mn, numbers that we want to work modulo. Um, it's convenient then to think about not just one remainder, but a whole sequence of remainders put together as something like a vector um, of remainders. This is supposed to be b1 mod m1 and so on and so forth. So we take the sequences of remainders and they're all modulo different things, b1, b2 and so on, modulo m1, m2 and so on. And we simply define addition by uh, the obvious vector addition, if you want to add uh, b's and c's, uh, c2 dot, dot, dot cn, uh, you simply calculate that out by adding the entries. Again, it's just the same as vectors from linear algebra. So 
nothing really clever there. What's different though is that in linear algebra you never multiply vectors to get vectors. In this case it's actually convenient um, to use the same sort of law to allow multiplication. If I replace the plus sign by a time sign and the same here, then I'll get the multiplication and so on. I don't want to write it all out, but uh, but you see what I mean, that this and this becomes a convenient way to operate uh, with, with tuples or with sequences of, of, of remainders. Uh, we can add them by adding the components, multiplying by multiplying the components, subtracting by subtracting the components. And that gives us a, a powerful technique to handle uh, not just one remainder, but a whole collection of them. So, for example, if we wanted to compute out um, modulo, not a single number, but modulo 3 comma 5, sorry, 3 comma 5, um, we'll work with uh, 2 comma 4 times um, 3 comma 2. And what is that? We're working up to 3 comma 5s. So we first multiply 2 times 3 in the first entry, and then we're multiplying 4 times 2 in the second entry. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8, but we're working up to 3s um, uh, and 5s. So we get to kill off all the 3s. There's two of them here, so we get that to 0. We get to kill off all the 5s from the 8, leaving us 3. And so that's how we can multiply uh, sequences of remainders. You multiply the individual entries, the 2 times the 3, the 4 times the 2, and then when you're done, you take remainders, modulo 3, modulo 5. So it's easy to do the calculations. It's harder to explain what it means than to actually do it. Now we want to think about how we would um, get, use this to get a picture of what's going on in the Chinese remainder theorem. Um, so again, we'll let uh, m be the product, m1 dot 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 mn, all of those numbers multiplied together. And then to each, um, to each remainder, so just a single number, not a, not a vector of numbers, but a single remainder, b modulo m, associate a whole vector and what's that vector going to be? Let's write it as b vector, which is b1, b2. What are its entries going to be? Or bi is the remainder of b mod mi. And that makes sense because mi divides m, and they're all co-prime. So once you know uh, what this remainder b is up to m's, you certainly know what it is up to the smaller numbers mi's. So we've associated to any individual number remainder, a single number like 7 modulo 13, we've associated a whole sequence of its remainders modulo these various mi's. So what we can do, um, well, let's say if we did as an example, um, if b is uh, 4, m is 6, then 6 is 2 times 3, we'll make that be uh, m1 and m2, 2 and 3, then we can simply calculate out that b1 has to be b mod 2, mod m1, and so, uh, but 2 goes into 4, so that's 0, and then b2 has to be uh, 4 mod 3, b mod 3, and 4 mod 3 is 1, mod 3s. And so what we'd find is that the vector associated to the number 4, uh, the vector of remainders is 0, 1. Now, there's some obvious facts about how these remainders work when you take sequences of remainders. Um, if you associate to each, uh, to each two numbers, b and c, mod m, you associate these vectors, um, b vector and c vector, modulo the obvious m vector, which is the vector of m1s to mn's, um, then uh, this association has some obvious properties, which are just that obviously b plus c, if you take, if you add things and then take remainders, you simply get the same thing as if you take the remainders and then you add, and that works for individual remainders, and therefore it works for each entry in this vector, and so it works for the vector as a whole. And similarly, if you subtract um, and then uh, take remainders the same as remainder, then subtract. So again, it works for whole vectors or remainders all at once. And again, if you multiply entry by entry, um, again, the, 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 I would point out that multiplying vectors to make vectors was not something we did in linear algebra. This is a very strange uh, uh, operation from the point of view of linear algebra. But it makes sense here. Um, we multiply the entries of b times the entries of c to make entries of b, c, and so on. So we could multiply the numbers and then take the vector, or we could multiply the vectors in this funny vector multiplication. Um, 
So this is just number multiplication, and this is weird vector multiplication. And then they have to match because again, entry by entry, um, this works. We know that you can uh, you can um, take remainders and multiply and then take the remainder and that that's well defined as a, an operation on the on remainders so um so just as an example let's see if we can calculate out what this looks like um let's let the vector of of different moduli be 3 4 7 and then m has to be 3 times 4 times 7 which we already said was 84 and then we get um Let's take B to be, for example, 8 modulo 84. Um, then um, we have B1 is 8 modulo 3, which is uh, taking out the 3s, you get 2 mod 3. B2 is 8 mod 4, which is uh, uh, 0 mod 4s. And B3 is um, 8 mod 7s which is 1 mod 7s, and so our b vector um, is, um, is uh, 2, 0, 1 mod uh, 3, 4, 7. Okay, so we know how to do the calculations of these vectory things, um, vector modulus, and, um, and then we can, we can try and say what does the Chinese remainder theorem tell us about them. And what it says uh, can be described simply as that um, as a corollary. Again, corollary means a, a result that's an easy consequence of, an, of a theorem we've already had. Is that if we have m1 to mn greater than zero co-prime, co-prime integers, um, and then the map um, b taking number uh, remainder b to vector of remainders uh, that we've that we've worked out um, is uh, one to one on to and um, takes addition to addition subtraction to subtraction and multiplication to multiplication it identifies all these arith all these arithmetic operations on numbers with operations on vectors um, and it it's a it's a perfect bijection it's a perfect one to one on to mapping between them because we know how to solve the pro the problem of given these remainders how do we find the b um, and uh, we can solve it uniquely, and we proved it's unique up to up to m, so it's a unique remainder. So we know exactly how to how to solve this problem, and that means therefore that we must actually have a perfectly uh, perfectly worked out mapping that goes back the other way. So um, and because the the uniqueness property showed us that this is actually one to one. Okay, so we now have this this description. It's a much more conceptual description of the Chinese remainder theorem. It's not um, it doesn't show you how to calculate anything. We've now gone as far as we want to go with the theory of integers and um, modular arithmetic. And so what we want to do next is to think about polynomials. We'll see if, to what extent we can uh, generalize these theorems about integers to theorems about polynomials.